everyone. I hope you guys are doing good. Master Jedi, your new profile pic <laughs> threw me for a loop for a second. I was like, who is that? <laughs> it looks great, though. How are you doing, Val? I'm doing great. But apparently my apartment complex is mowing the grass for the third time this week. So I'm going to be on mute for a while. <laughs> no worries. Um, if you guys could do me a favor and go ahead and spam the channels with the AMA. Give you guys a few minutes. See, Prof's already at work transcribing. <laughs> Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. And if anyone needs a recap, then we will get that for them. Um, we are recording the session and it will be on YouTube later today. Um, it does take a couple hours for YouTube to initiate the closed captioning. And then I believe that we can actually download a transcript from there. And then, of course, we have Prof doing the recap in main chat for those of you that aren't able to listen live but still want live information. Um, I will go ahead and start with the progress report summary of basically things that we are continuing to work on. Um, the liquidity pool migration is still in progress. We are still working on changing to Circle IO instead of having everything on Discourse. Um, it's going to be more of a hub of information for everyone to go for. Um, easier to get different places for everybody. It'll just be really nice. Um, the facility deal is still in progress and we are in communication. Um, please refrain from speculation. It just hurts things. And all of us, the directors, um, admins, and advisors have taken the stance of um, sharing news when it is shareable and not discussing it in the meantime. We don't want to do anything that would jeopardize the deal in any way. We are still um, waiting to hear back from the Binance Industry Recovery Fund that we applied for. So that's still in progress. Um, we are also reviewing multiple external sources of capital. So um, we've had some community members send us some information that we're reviewing and seeing if it would be a fit for us or not. Um, we are working on applying to the Binance Labs and BNB Chain Launch Session Season 6 for MVP Accelerator Program. They really could have made that shorter, in my opinion. But um, Master Jedi would probably have better information on that. Um, as far as community news goes, so December 5th is when I'm going to do a big Lunar Discord um reset or refresh so everyone's xp will get uh, set back down to zero um new roles and um different rules and stuff will be listed in chats and the sections for you guys um there'll be more details on future competitions shilling which will include approved materials that you guys can use different rules for shilling to qualify so that will come back and rewards will be situated for that um, we're also going to update daily games back to where the Lunar Exchange for the Stardust will be back in place as well. Get that included for you guys. Um, I'm looking at doing some other things as far as the rewards for the store, like print-on-demand um, merchandise, things like that for you guys to kind of keep it a little bit fresh. Um, I'm going to go into the AMA questions. I did... I respond to these already today, just trying to give those people information that had already asked. So some of these are specifically to Master Jedi, and I'll have him get to those when we get a chance. Let's see. So Jack had asked if the current funding for the dev runs out at the end of December. A uh, simple answer is no, <laughs> it doesn't. Um, we have, um, there are funds for the development team past December. So. Um, Next question was from AK Crypto. So he says, originally the lunar crystals were minted under the following future benefit promises, lunar ecosystem utility, significant lunar staking value, 0.5% uh, lunar reflections. And he's asking what happened to the pre-DAO lunar tokens in the operational wallet that were being set aside for crystal staking rewards? Can some of the tokens currently being swapped for the V1 LP BNB during LP injection be reallocated back to Genesis crystal staking as promised? And then he said, I understand our current primary task as a DAO community is to fund, develop, and complete products, software, apps, wallets, etc., to establish the legitimacy of Lunar, but 
Completely going back on the very recent NFT utility and staking promise is definitely a blemish to the reputation of Lunar as a whole. And then his next topic was, what is the facility deal? Which I kind of already answered. That is, we are, um, I'll get to that in just a moment. So for his ones, um, I just wanted to remind you guys that it's important to remember that anything stated by the previous Lunar team is under the decision of Lunar Dow, whether it gets continued or not. Um, we are trying to stick to the previous plan as much as possible um, and improve upon it. So some of the things that may have been said before may be altered or made better, things like that. Um, the tokens are still in the possession of Lunar Dow and are part of the Lunar Treasury. Um, the tokens being swapped are being placed into the Lunar Treasury. And staking is currently being discussed in discourse. Again, nothing has been decided until it's been brought to a vote by Lunar Dow. And then for the definition of a facility deal is up to interpretation. As I said, um, we have all decided not to take the stance on not discussing anything related to it, and we will announce more information when appropriate. We just appreciate your guys' patience. We know it's hard. We're all excited. We want to know as much information as possible. But like I said, you know, revealing something that we shouldn't and, you know, causing issues is just not something we're willing to risk. Let's see. Um, the next question was, is Lunar still partnered with the Planetary Society? So um, that previous partnership was with Lunar DeFi and not with Lunar DAO. So that would be something that would be up to Lunar DAO if they see any benefit in continuing that relationship. Um, let's see. And then there was another question about NFT staking and how the mechanism works how the, what the yield is and the base structure. So for that one, it's kind of a simple answer. It's just staking for the lunar crystals hasn't been established yet. Um, we've moved to the DAO structure and Lunar DAO would ultimately make those decisions. Let's see. And then from Gandalf Lunar Pants, um, he was asking if the $25 Lunar Shop incentive was coming back and the answer is yes. Um, also about rating so he's talking about doing like the twitter shill rates yes those will also be back as well with the added materials so like a vault for approved things that you guys can use to make your tweets more um engaging um and it said let's see he seems that the lunar discord community is slowly dying and is <laughs> well he's just <laughs> i don't want to repeat what he said because i don't think he's he's you know feels that way at all but um he said that he loves the community and it's really precious to him and that he loves us all and he just wanted some clear thoughts. So yes, um, over the transition, it has slowed down a little bit, but it's already picking back up. Engagement is increasing according to the numbers and things like that. It's just a matter of us all kind of adjusting to the transition. Um, things have been going up, so I'm excited. We've been making regular posts on Twitter that hadn't been done for months and um, different things like that. So I'm excited. Um, we're also planning on doing a end of the year celebration for you guys and hopefully to have that announcement included in the December 5th information when we do the refresh. So let me see. All right. I know I just like boggled your mind with a whole bunch of information. Um, Master Jedi, there were a couple questions in the AMA questions for you do you want me to read them to you and then answer how would you like to do that uh, <clears throat> sure go for it you're, okay. the, you're the host <laughs> okay so this is a question from robin ntg um and it's saying what are your thoughts about stable swap do you think we can develop this for our decks a uh, curve pool is essentially a smart contract that implements the stable swap invariant and therefore contains the logic for exchanging stable tokens. However, while all curve pools implement a stable swap invariant, they may come in two different pool flavors. In its simplest form, a curve pool is an implementation of the stable swap invariant with two or more tokens, which can be referred to as a plain pool. Alternative and more complex pool flavors include pools with lending functionality, so-called lending pools, as well as meta pools, which are pools that allow for the exchange of one or more tokens with the tokens of one or more underlying base pool. Um, Curve also integrates with uh, Synthix uh, to offer cross-asset swaps and all exchange functionality that Curve supports as well as noteworthy, 
noteworthy, implementation details are explained in technical depth in this section. So I guess he's wanting to know how you feel about stable swap and explained it. Uh, yeah, so Robin, appreciate the question. Um, when it comes to the decks, we will be looking at uh, multiple different angles on how to implement uh, the different liquidity pools that we'll need to have in order to be able to, um, uh, you know, effectively leverage uh, the store of value and the transfer um, uh, utility that the LNR token will have in that environment. Um, uh, clearly, with the with this, um, and apologies if I'm a little slower than usual, folks. I got a migraine today. Um, typically, when setting up these pools, um, I know given given what's happened in the ecosystem, uh, stablecoin is always going to feel like the best approach. Um, and so, uh, Curve, other stable swap variants, and other uh, swapping options are going to be on the table. We haven't made any decisions about which approach we would use, um, but any approach that doesn't involve lending is going to be on the table for discussion. So um, I really appreciate you bringing it to my attention, uh, Robin, and uh, we'll, as we, as we start working on that, we're putting together or we'll be expanding on uh, it's a good opportunity to tell everybody about it. Um, when we got started within this process, um, we did a fair amount of research um, on uh, what the ecosystem looked like, what tools were out there, what um, environments there were, what are how do you deploy things, what are the best options for um, compilation and de and deployment, all the all that good stuff. Uh, we have a sixty six page internal document on exactly what that uh, ecosystem looks like. And um, I imagine that uh, Curve will get a pretty decent section in there as we go to research um, how we're going to manage the liquidity pools uh, on the decks. So uh, really appreciate the insight on that. Um, please uh, feel free to keep funneling uh, new technologies and whatnot our direction so that we can uh, you know, properly evaluate things as we progress through the development cycle. That's it for that one. I saw another question further down. If you wanted to wanted to read off the .NET seven, can you folks hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking. <laughs> so it's like, um, I just scream into the void. Yes, I was like, I wonder if he's muted or he's having technical problems. But it was totally me. Anyway, <laughs> so for the .NET uh, 7.0, how does that impact the production of the blockchain? Did Lunar already upgrade to .NET 7.0? And then it asked a continuation on that is Lunar is known as Lunar DeFi. Is the DeFi still relevant with the new structure? Uh, so I can I could tackle both of those. And I'm going to start the last one first. So Lunar DeFi Inc. was the name of the previous company. Um, that company is no longer valid or relevant. Um, DeFi is still relevant in how we think about the ecosystem moving forward. Uh, clearly, uh, the last three, four months have proven that uh, centralized exchanges are not the way to go. Um, so um, decentralized, the, the more open you can be and transparent you can be within these exchanges that are being built, the better. So... Uh, DeFi is still a significant part of our future. Um, part of the reason DeFi was taken out of the name uh, was because it made things a lot more difficult in terms of uh, getting bank accounts, in terms of uh, being able to advertise on Twitter, and all sorts of those kind of things. Uh, DeFi is kind of a banned word in those situations. So um, uh, there's some instances where we have to be creative about how we talk about things in order to be able to... Um, stay within the uh the uh market square or the town square as it were in terms of communicating our ideas uh so DeFi is very much a part of our uh blood and our ethos but is not necessarily a part of our name uh to help make it easier to uh, be able to stay in the conversation um on the second side on don at seven uh, so .NET 7 has massive uh, performance improvements um, that are uh, out of the box 
uh, make things better. Um, they're Microsoft uh, does a ton of work on performance. Every major .NET release, uh, .NET 7 is no different. Um, if you've been paying attention to, and I always blank on the name, so I believe it's the Tech Empower uh, rankings. Uh, .NET 7 took .NET from 8th to 7th in terms of the fastest uh, development platforms out there, and uh, we'll continue to see that improve. Um, one of the biggest benefits that we'll be able to take advantage of is uh, multi-threading in uh, WebAssembly apps. And so uh, we're definitely excited about um, upgrading, uh, getting our, our platform upgrade out the door. Um, it also, .NET 7 uh, made a number of significant improvements towards the WebAssembly containers. That's going to make it easier to run... Um, the blockchain validator nodes and stuff like that um, when we uh, have that project uh, separated out and moving forward with that. So uh, .NET 7 is massive for us. Uh, it's really helping us um, make the platform more scalable, more transactions per second. Uh, Microsoft invests more. Uh, I, I think I, if I remember correctly, Microsoft has invested, um, at, I'm going to say at least... Two billion dollars. I feel like it's somewhere between two and ten, but um, my memory is failing me at the moment. So I know for a fact it's at least two billion dollars in the .NET ecosystem, and honestly, no other platform uh, matches that level of investment. So uh, .NET Seven has been fantastic for us, and we only expect it to get better over time. Awesome. We appreciate that. We have a very serious question from uh, Professor Hefe. He wants to know, he says that you get a lot of crap from people on TG. He's wondering if you listen to Human by Rag and Bones on Auto Loop. And then uh, I'm... No. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, but I will give it a listen uh, now that you've suggested it and see if it should uh, go on my Spotify playlist. Um, uh, no, I appreciate that. Look, um, Telegram has been... Um, uh, a bit of a challenge, but um, I think overall things are getting better. Um, I think that as a community, it's really helpful for everybody to to understand and know that um, the six, may, or everybody in the foundation, I don't want to if I say a number, somebody's going to yell at me, I'm going to get it wrong. Uh, so everybody in the foundation is still uh, working in the best interest of the DAO and everyone involved. And um, it's the the tone has shifted and it's been nice. Um, I hope it continues uh, where people understand that, like, if there were shenanigans going on, we wouldn't still be here. OK, um, we're here because we're trying to make the ecosystem better and we're trying to build the vision that we've set uh, set forth since the beginning. Um, the means by which we do that has changed, um, but the core vision of uh, what crypto looks like in a multi planetary future has not. Um, and if anybody's seen anything in the last few months, it's that this DeFi thing is much more important to the future than, you know, many outsiders really thought that it was. So um, we're going to see um, some really exciting stuff happening. Um, the group is hard at work. I know this uh, was not necessarily part of the question per se, but where I did see last night on Telegram um, people using the voting process to replace their serotonin supply and uh, know that we are working to have another set of items up for vote soon. Uh, the team's been working very hard behind the scenes on all sorts of documentation about what has to be done next. And uh, we'll start making uh, whatever we can available to you folks as soon as possible. So um, I just appreciate everybody that's been helping out. I want to make sure like we are doing a good job um, helping people that are coming in off of some of the comments on CMC and assuming that those comments on CMC are accurate, that we're helping people understand um, where we actually are what's actually going on and uh, doing a great job uh, keeping people um, informed in that process. And then finally, I'll say I'm really excited about Circle um, and the community there and what we'll be able to do in terms of making it laser focused on um, providing information about what's going on in DAO governance and keeping that really um, 
heavily focused on uh, on providing that information. So um, I think you'll start to see some of our community um, process clarify um, and like the purpose of Discord versus Telegram versus Circle uh, start to really flesh itself out in that. So I'm very excited. Um, please, uh, along with that, keep um, posting great comments on CMC. Try not to engage directly with the Futters, um, but feel free to um, uh, post your own comments uh, that clarify the situation for people, because um, uh, there are definitely some people that are still vocal that have access to grind. So uh, we got to be able to make sure that we're informing people outside. But uh, if I do appreciate the question, uh, try not to ramble anymore. Um, uh, thanks for your help also in the community, keeping people informed. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that um, we are working on getting the uh, Lunar Genesis Crystals claimed on OpenSea. So that yeah. will open up some um, different avenues. We just have to go through the, um, I don't know, I guess you could say their system as far as claiming, you know, submitting and everything like that. Master Jedi has been on that and he's working hard. So that's exciting. Yeah, that was a uh, that was an exciting um, <laughs> kind of out of left field announcement that kind of uh, threw the rest of our plans for the week into a little bit of turmoil. Um, we are uh, working to get the collection claimed. We're working to get um, all of that made official and like a, a blue check collection, that sort of thing. Um, we are working. <laughs> we've been investigating. Um, there was an issue with Binance NFT, and apparently the Binance NFTs are locked. Um, to give people just a little bit of background on that situation, for those of you that might have Binance NFTs, um, initially when we worked with them, we uh, were to transfer uh, 500 uh, by NFTs into a single Binance wallet, um, which their entire NFT platform runs off of. And then... Um, uh, their like system is not very well designed for bulk NFT management. And so um, when we determined that we wanted to use those NFTs on other platforms instead, um, it was incredibly difficult. We were going to have to transfer the NFTs out one at a time. Uh, and on 500 NFTs, that was going to be a gigantic waste of our time. So what we decided to do instead was burn the NFTs um, so that we could re-create uh, them somewhere else. However, that apparently triggered a flag in Binance's system that locked the remaining NFTs from being transferred. And so there are some of our, cust of our shared customers that have Binance NFTs or that have Lunar Genesis crystals in their Binance wallets that they can't move. Uh, we're in the process of uh, working with the Binance NFT group to get that situation resolved uh, so that people can transfer their tokens out. <coughs> if there is no other option, we will have to identify individuals that have NFTs in Binance and validate that they are there before we attempt to do any burn and remint. Um, but I want to be very careful about um, that is a like an extreme last resort kind of situation that we're trying to stay away from. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that situation resolved uh, with the Binance NFTs and make those available. Uh, we do. Uh, we are working now that OpenSea is available on Binance. There are other things that we are working on to make sure uh, that we can take advantage of that opportunity um, the best we can, and we'll have more details on that uh, when we have them. So uh, OpenSea, very excited about it, very excited about the opportunity for expanding that ability. And remember, the uh, NFTs, excuse me, have significant voting rights along with them. So um, uh, making that available to a wider audience outside of just the normal Binance folks is going to be uh, a great thing moving forward. So very excited about that. 
Awesome. Um, so I know that there were some other questions basically about the Binance Labs and the chain launch session um, that we had applied previously and that we are looking at applying again. Um, can you kind of go over the difference between before and now as far as our application? Yeah, so um, the, just to be clear, we have not started the application yet. I just found out about it yesterday or the day before. So we're going to like go back over the previous materials and see what we can put together and, and create a new application. First off, I want to say that um, no um, intelligent strategy of any kind involves putting all your eggs in one basket. That could be for managing portfolios. It could be for uh, finding investment realms. Uh, you can't just apply to one place and then keep your fingers crossed and hope that it happens because a no is a hell of a lot easier to say than yes. And you're going to hear a lot of no's to get to yeses. So um, uh, I don't know if uh, any of you in the United States uh, have seen uh, the marketing that happens around uh, the lottery system. It's very simple. You can't win if you don't play. I don't play, so I'm not going to win. But uh, when it comes to applying for these things, uh, you have a 100% chance of not getting it if you don't apply. Your chances only get better from there if you do. So uh, we are going to apply. <coughs> what happened last time, if I remember correctly, like, I don't need people like quoting me on it or looking it up in Telegram later and, and shoving it in my face. Um, if I remember correctly, the pitch was much more focused around simply building a DEX and simply building a wallet app. And those things are simply not um, a compelling when pitched in that way, looking at the hundreds of other people that were also simply trying to do the same thing. So um, what I don't believe that the application itself leaned into uh, enough was on the fact that uh, is what brought me into the project, which was uh, crypto needs to be better if humans are going to have a multi-planetary future because digital currency is the future of human currency. And so um, we need to lean more into making the form that is submitted, because it's a Google form that somebody reads, it has to be compelling from the second you look at it. From the second you start reading, if the title's not compelling, you're not going to look at the details. If the, if the first couple entries are not compelling, somebody's going to move on. And so... Um, we're going to lean more into that. We're going to lean the deck more into that. And the, the wedge that you get started in that environment is around digital collectibles. And I understand as soon as I say digital collectibles or NFTs, there's going to be a portion of the community that rolls their eyes. There's going to be another portion of the community that tries to flip their desks over. Here's the thing. A token is a token. Whether it's fungible or non-fungible, tokens are the future of crypto and so by being able to set up <clears throat> if you think about how are you going to move objects in the future how are you going to represent something digitally right now uh, nft focuses on being a collectible what happens 25 years from now when you are a pizza hut operating on mars and you need to get a shipment of supplies onto the next rocket headed there how are you going to represent uh, what your order was and how are you going to track its movement across the solar system? You're going to do that through <coughs> the blockchain and through a digital representation of that physical asset. And so um, that requires effort to build. That requires a long-term thinking and strategy and having a platform that's going to make it easier to understand how to create those digital equivalents of physical assets is what the minting system is all about at its core. And so we're going to talk about how um, NFTs and consumer minting is the wedge to be able to get you into making it easier for consumers to do these things. Because our system, I'm very proud of how easy it is um you could use it from a phone uh in a um with the right wallet app you could use it from a phone in a spacesuit and that's 
part of the point. It, the stuff when we build it, when we think about simplicity, you have to think about how are you going to be able to use this in a future where humans are multiplanetary? And so that's always a part of our design process. So we're going to lean more into that. We're going to make it real freaking compelling so that you're going to want to open it. You're going to want to see the deck. You're going to want to watch the demo. You're going to want to dig in. And oh, by the way, <clears throat> the decks stuff in the last go round was very heavily competitive. If you look at the results and like, do your own research. I'm not going to look up the link for you. You can go find it. Um, but if you look at the results and who got awarded things, there were only like two awards in the NFT division versus like 13, something like that companies that were uh, doing anything else. And so being in a um, less viewed uh, subsection of the Binance program is going to we want to be a big fish in a small pond and not a small fish in a big pond. So that's the thinking behind it. That's how we get more engagement. <clears throat> we're going to put the effort and time into making this pitch work because it's not the only pitch we're going to make. It's not the only time we're going to apply for something. And we need to be able to have the resources to where next time we're not having to write stuff from scratch because we're pitching investors were pitching like regular venture capital type investors were pitching crypto hedge funds and stuff like that. And as we're pitching that content is getting tighter and tighter and we use it over and over again. So that's the thought process behind it. That's why we're doing it. That's why we're putting in the time uh, we need to make sure that uh, we have multiple sources of revenue to stabilize this project for the future and anything that we can do to partner with Binance is time worth spending. So that's our thinking behind it. Hope that helps. That's awesome. We appreciate it. Um, I wanted to touch base. I know that um, we had a suggestion about keeping um, Discord geared towards, you know, DAO information. Um, so Discord is our social area. So having conversations with each other, getting to know each other is, um, it's where it happens. It is the heart and soul of what I like to think of as Lunar. Um, so if there are questions or things that you guys need, um, the best place to probably put them is in the AMA questions or even, um, questions for suggestions or anything like that. That way they can be easier to find and not having to go through a whole chat for communication. We do have the intention of putting together a frequently asked section. Um, so that way it'll be easier for people to find information specifically that they're looking for. And it'll help us with not having to um, answer questions um, multiple times and just make it more efficient for everybody as well. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to add before we get to audience questions, Master Jedi? Um, yeah, I'm really excited about Circle and the reason we picked Circle and, and the process of dealing with the governance of the lunar ecosystem um, in that information structure because uh, first and foremost, um, you have to be in the lunar ecosystem in order to have a say. So right now in Discord, Telegram, it's really easy to create an account to have a bag that has three lunar in it and be very vocal, um, which I love people that are vocal. I love, I'm a vocal person. I'm within the Microsoft e ecosystem. I'm a squeaky wheel uh, that has been very effective at getting the grease. Um, so I understand the tactics. Um, in Circle, you have to have lunar in order to get in. And so that's going to be really important for being able to focus the discussions on specifically um, how to be an effective member of the DAO, uh, how to um, put uh, proposals together, and which stage of the process proposals are in. I think you're going to be really excited about the structure that we've come up with because it's going to be crystal clear on what's going on. Um, in Discord and Telegram, those are, again, as... as uh, um, Silverdust said, are social places, right? It's a place to for the community to come together, to chat about things, to build rapport, to, um, you know, um, off the cuff or, or in a um, in a really easy way, just to let the community be able to move forward. Um, <clears throat> it's also the place in Discord where we deal with support tickets and issues that are going on and that supporting the community process is really important. Um, so 
as we move through um you know it's kind of it'd be great if we had one place for all of the community that also becomes difficult to manage and so the balance that we're going to have is when you want to know something about um the process the governance platform on circle is going to be the first place to look and the second place to look is going to be discord and so I think that's going to knowing that structure is going to be really important in making sure that everybody gets the right information and that the right information is coming from the right sources um, so that people have an easy way to look up answers to questions that they have. Um, so I'm excited about that. We're putting a lot of effort into making sure that that's consistent, um, that that's uh, done in a way that um, can be addressed and that. Um, we'll be at a point shortly where we can talk about um, how moderation is going to work and 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 getting the hang of that platform with everybody involved. So um, uh, be looking out for that. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to understand what's going on when we have those three pillars in place and they're they're solidly focused. Awesome. I appreciate that. Um, anything else as far as that you need to add or Val, did you have anything you needed to add before we get to questions? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. So I see Jack. Jack, I'm going to go ahead and invite you up here. How are you, Jack? Hey, what's up, guys? Good. What can we do for you? Oh, oh you can hear me good, right? I'm just uh, getting set back up from flipping over my table a minute ago. My dad, so. <laughs> no, I'm not a huge NFT guy, but uh, my question is actually related to that somewhat. But um, hopefully, you guys had a good Thanksgiving as well. Figured I'd say that. Absolutely. Sounds like a, sounds like Jedi's got some of the crud that my wife's family brought to us over the weekend. So yeah, there's um, I think my wife had something along that front. I just had, um, there's a storm that came through earlier today. And, uh, anytime when you're in a generally low pressure environment that a thunderstorm comes through, it ends up wreaking havoc with my uh, headaches. And then, uh, I've been trying to wean myself off of caffeine, uh, or at least the, uh, heavily loaded Starbucks extra sugar kind. And, uh, that hasn't been <laughs> as nice to me as I would have liked either. Mm. Yeah, that's hard to get off of caffeine. That'll yeah. do it every time. Yep. Um, so I'll just ask the question real quick before Silverdust kicks me off. I'm sure she's like, oh, what's Jack got now? Um, but uh the my question was on the plot the minting platform. Um w when we had it previously, it was just we just clicked the button. Feedback was great and everything, but it was pretty simple. I'm mm -hmm. assuming if it's going to be completed for others to be able to mint on the platform, uh, there's going to be a lot more functionality that's available on it this next time that it's released to be able to create yep. a collection. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that was kind of my question is if the, if y'all had any info on like, I don't know, just <laughs> what we can expect on that. Yeah. So we're going to keep the, the application that you mint with separate from the application that you manage a mint with. And, and the reason for that is to keep the platform very highly focused and also for security. You don't necessarily want consumers uh, being able to have the wrong login as an, or like a like you've misconfigured a role and somehow a consumer is able to have like more control over the um, the collection than you would expect them to be able to. Right. So keeping the minting app very like highly focused. Um, helps manage complexity and make sure that the experience is as simple as possible for the end user. Um, however, you are correct that a um, customer is going to need to be able to like, create a collection, either use our contract or pick someone else's contract, be able to upload the branding, um, be able to manage the number of NFTs that are going to be available. Um, we're not initially going to help with like generative collections or things like that um initially um and initially uh we're imagining like any like standard web 2.0 software as a service platform that we are going to have to um do a non a not insignificant amount of work to stand up the first couple customers and that's because you don't want to be too opinionated on the setup process right from the beginning because your assumptions will always be wrong so 
uh, you want to build the least uh, amount of tech necessary to let a customer be able to do their thing. And you want to be heavily involved with that onboarding process so that you see where the friction is and you can adapt. So we're not going to build like a ton of features on the management side before we validated what people need. Having said that, and I really appreciate the question, Jack, because it gives me the opportunity to talk a little bit about this. When we've talked about the faction NFTs and the uh, Expoverse NFTs and getting those out the door, the process of getting those out the door has required us to build some of these management features already because the original plan, and again, remember, a lot of this development happened before the DAO switchover. So <clears throat> the idea was that there were going to be future NFTs awarded, which is a great idea in concept. In execution, the blockchain is static. Uh, IPFS, or the interplanetary file system, is static. And once you upload something, it's permanent. And so if you want to make changes to that collection later, for example, adding more NFTs that are different from what's up there already, you have to totally regenerate the collection, totally regenerate the, um, the metadata, upload a brand new set of metadata and a brand new set of um, visual files to the system, and then move everything on the contract so that it's pointing to that new metadata. It's a non-zero and actually quite significant amount of effort. And so while you could say, well, you know, there are three NFTs from Expoverse and, and whatever, 150 NFTs from the um, uh, Faction Awards, let's just generate those by hand, that gets that set of NFTs out the door. What happens next time? Because there's going to be a next time. They're going to want to issue award NFTs for something else. And so we already started building out that backend management system for uh, functionality that would end up being targeted at uh, NFT minting customers that would be able to manage those NFTs and automate how the metadata is generated, uploaded, and deployed to the contracts because wow. that from a development perspective every time you want to do that that's hours and hours of work every time you want to do a new nft change <clears throat> that's easily between 15 and, and 25 hours worth of work for a development team so we've already like built out the code to automate that process and now and when we've talked about like assessing the work that needs to be done we don't have a 100 percent answer on the work that needs to be done now just to be clear but um we're going back through the code to make sure and to see like how much work is it going to take to get a version of that platform out the door that we can go pound the pavement to nft creators and say hey use our mint instead let's change the colors a little bit let's throw a different nft image on the mint platform let's deploy it to a different site slap your logo on it and run a mint and see what happens and to be clear on like how you get paid for that there's going to be some sort of initial fee and there's going to be an ongoing per transaction fee right and so you're creating this mix of um recurring revenue which is always more stable than transaction revenue and transaction revenue which helps make sure that that you take advantage of the the peaks in a system but you need the recurring revenue to be able to help continue an ecosystem when transactions slow down and as we've seen in a crypto ecosystem the you can't build a business model that's solely built on transaction volume because it doesn't handle a bear market I want to add a little bit extra here. Um, philosophically, we are, where possible, wanting to do as much for business to business as we are from business to consumer. Um, B2B is where the money is, and uh, B2C, which would be how we interact with the public, is where we get all of the um, love and warmth and happiness. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
So this is going to solve both of those problems. And then there are going to be some times where we don't get to do one or the other. Um, but in general, in Web3, there's very little to very bad um, B2B infrastructure at all. Um, pretty much any aspect that you're doing, NFTs or tokens or whatever, it doesn't matter. They're all bad. Um, for example, there's literally no place where you can go in and make a business account with multiple users in Web3. It doesn't yep. exist. Mm -hmm. So we want to solve those problems as much as the roadmap that we've always had. Yeah, and it's the, the easy way to think about that, too, which everybody knows, is there's kind of a new, there's been like B2B and B2C. There's kind of an, a, an intermediate in between that's B2B2C business to business to consumer. And that's really when you look at, um, when we think B2C, it's not just business to consumer, but business to creator. And those creators also have customers. And so it's about enabling people to be able to build their own businesses around digital assets. And that, that strategy you're going to see a lot more of, because again, you just have to think about the numbers, which is easier. I'm just going to pose this question to the community. I'd love to hear answers in Telegram or Discord on what you think, which is easier, getting 10 people to pay $100,000 a pop or getting 20,000 people to pay $5 a pop? The answer is not as cut and dry as you might think. So, or it could be exactly as cut and dry as you it's a lot easier to get a company to write a hundred thousand uh, dollar deal than it is to get uh, twenty thousand people to pay five bucks. The the reach and the advertising and the spend that you have to pay in order to get there, customer acquisition matter. You can't just spend an unlimited amount of money to acquire a customer, and the the profit margin on a hundred thousand dollar a pop customer is significantly higher, and your payback period is significantly shorter than trying to get a customer that pays five dollars a month. And oh, by the way, it costs you one hundred and fifty dollars to acquire that customer, which means you're not paid back for at least two years. So all of those things like matter, like building a, an actual business and not just being a crypto project. Like part of the reason that so many other crypto projects failed is because they have no idea how that crap works. And they're just 22 year olds that have never built a, recur a, a recurring revenue business in their lives. And they're just trying to um, skim money off the top. All of those projects are dying. Building a company means understanding customer acquisition costs, means understanding the market, means finding a niche and exploiting it. And that's exactly what you're seeing us do within this structure is finding the niche where people aren't playing, building a name for ourselves and exploiting the crap out of it. So hopefully that helps provide more context. Well, I'm glad I asked the question. I think everybody loves to hear Jedi go off on a rant <laughs> you know a long talk well, i appreciate the thoughtfulness of the question and um and how you're approaching it and um thanks for all your uh, help and support in the in the forums and your inquisitiveness it's uh it's greatly appreciated well i'm I'm glad i'm still here man we you know like you said uh there aren't many projects that have the business acumen and the technical skills that we have in this project so gonna it'll be awesome and like i just want to i want to continue to point out you guys have no idea how much business acumen the foundation has like i am so excited to work with these folks um because um everybody is a um is an expert in their own right and in their own way in their own field and that expertise coming together um has been better for this organization than you guys know um understand that it's an iceberg. And right now what you're getting is uh, the very top of that iceberg. You're going to start to feel the impact of that soon. So um, I'm very excited working with these folks. There's a lot of acumen at the table and that's only going to benefit everybody. I appreciate everything I've learned from Luna over the last year. I'll say I have a lot more ammunition looking at other new projects to 
drop a little money on. You know, you start asking questions that Lunar answers, and you can tell pretty pretty quick right away, like you said, when they're 22-year-olds running the project, they don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. And they don't and like the just... questions. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't like the questions. So... Yeah, no, we, I, we, let's be clear. We don't have everything figured out. We're, we're all still learning a ton of stuff, but look, we've got, we've got the brain power uh, between Spaceman, Moonshot, and the Foundation, and everybody that's here working on it. Uh, we've got the brain power to get this stuff done. So that's the key. Um, and we're not... The, there's four quadrants of knowledge. There's known knowns. There's known unknowns. There's unknown knowns and there's unknown unknowns, right? The goal of any project is to shrink that last quadrant of the crap you don't know that you don't know. And we have that here. There's still a bunch of stuff that we don't know we don't know, especially around regulation in the United States. Um, but uh, everything we're doing is about shrinking that last quadrant. So hope that helps. Appreciate it. I'm going to Thank drop you. off. Awesome. Thanks, Jack. Uh, right. I don't see any other questions. Anyone else have questions that's in the audience that would like to be invited up? I don't see any hands as of now. Going once, going twice. <laughs> um, do you have anything else you'd like to add that sparked anything, Master Jedi or Val? I'll let Val go first. Yeah. Um, there was a question uh, in AMA questions about doing Twitter space AMAs. Um, <clears throat> there, he said the, or they said they feel like there'd be bigger exposure there. We actually used to do Twitter space AMAs and they're kind of garbagey because we didn't put a lot of effort into like making it good in the first place. So the outreach is better and everything else about it is worse. Um, that's why we have moved to doing Discord only because uh, Telegram's AMA whatever wasn't also wasn't very great um so if that changes and we will continue to like look for ways to make this experience better we'll move but right now the twitter space ama function is not very good perfect thank you um anything else master jedi um i don't think so um it's been an exciting week um there'll be a lot um we're, we're doing our best to keep everything as transparent as possible in terms of when we get stuff done. Um, and uh, there'll be a lot more to talk about here um, as the as the team is reacclimated. Um, we're presently on the developer side. We're doing all the stuff that has been um, already authorized. So the Circle CI stuff. Um, and um, I don't remember what else at the moment, but we've got... Um, Plenty of work that we're doing. I'm very excited to keep the ball rolling and um, uh, looking looking forward to what happens in December. A lot of a lot of great progress happening. So um, uh, everybody, keep uh, keep the positive vibes going. Keep your feedback coming, and uh, we'll have uh, keep the discussions going on uh, discourse. Um, about the proposals that are coming we got a bunch more we have we have more proposals coming so more um more information more work um the info machine is chugging along so appreciate everybody's patience uh, looking forward to what 2023 brings uh let's uh bring the rest of this year home and uh appreciate everybody so thank you Awesome. Uh, like I said, we appreciate you guys, your support and your patience and all the positive vibes that you guys have been sending. Um, community is amazing. You know, for every negative thing that comes out, there's, you know, 20 positive comments and, you know, or more. And it's just, we think you guys are amazing and we wouldn't be doing this without you. So I believe that's probably the end of the AMA. Um, and we hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, everyone.